Alors ça... Thanks for waiting. Sorry about that. Um, I'll tell you about myself first. My name is Andrew Norton Weber, and I've had a basic Western education from the state of Maine in the United States, and uh, very little Eastern training. Got a lot of Western stuff after high school on my own, soccer days and play uh, Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. And someone's talk too loud. I just slowly became aware, uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, of the on purpose assault on us. I think it seems to be a dividing line when you, at first, you think that it's all the garbage you see happening in the world is, is being done, it's all in earnest. There's just people trying their best, and oh, we screwed up with this, and oh, we spilled oil in the Gulf, or you know, oh, we, we thought fluoride was good for you, sorry, you know. When you get over that hump of things being done on purpose, that's kind of what happened to me about 10 or 12 years ago. And I started researching health, because uh, I was doing the cooking. My wife is a painter. Um, and she was a real breadwinner in the family. We make our living by going to temporary weekend outdoor art festivals around the United States. And so I was kind of like Mr. Mom and doing the cooking and I got into vegetarianism and then uh, doing more stir fries, getting away from the American diet more. And I learned about raw foods. And through that, it got me into found out about urine therapy, and then found out about distilled water. And when I finally had the whole picture in my head, I knew that what I had was the solution. Uh, and it became a drawing line, a distinction line, between all the people out there who are supposedly trying to help wake us all up, is whether or not they're offering solutions. The ones that seem to tell you about how bad things are, uh, tell you how awful it is, but there's so few that are offering any solutions that it kind of leaves you feeling helpless. And aside from, oh, just put your love and light on. And so for me, uh, we spent about $50,000 putting together the source materials, the old books, uh, time spent traveling. And I've yet to have one dime come back into me uh, is compensation. But obviously, to me, why I'm doing this is because I want my planet back. Uh, once you understand what I'm about to tell you about is real, uh, and you won't, you know, I don't need any subscriptions from you. My website doesn't have any subscriptions to it, which is AquariusTheWaterBearer.com, spelled just like the constellation. To me, getting the planet back is obviously worth any dollars you could ever leave in front of my face. And I'm tired of this psychotic rat maze that we find ourselves in. And, um, tired of watching my fellow man feel beat down and feel hopeless. So you can see it in everybody's faces. There's these huge powers doing whatever they want on the planet. And we don't seem to have any individual power. Generally, the most powerful thing you think you do is to band with others and have protests. You know, you don't really know what to do. Uh, but this piece of knowledge, nobody can stop you from doing. And that's the real difference of it. And so I'm not selling anything. I, I don't even have a book to sell. Uh, if I do get my book together, I won't mind making money from that, because that's something I put together. It's some work. But uh, what I really want is I want everybody to, to know and remember this. And I'm, I'm working on trying to light up the 100th monkey. It's just going to be a certain critical mass of us that needs to remember this. This is ancient knowledge, and it will go to everybody. So, how many of you have a basic idea of what we're going to be talking about and you're just waiting to hear some bits and pieces to help back it up? Okay. How many of you are already drinking either distilled water? How many dare to raise a hand about urine? Okay. How many here have no idea what I'm talking about? Or it's their first time? Kind of. Kind of. 
how many of you have experienced anything so far? You, is it all so, a lot of you, it's recent enough that you, you maybe haven't experienced something? Some of you have. Um, I'm sorry for my movement. <laughs> I just paced around all of you. Um, kind of ADD, as kind of the symptoms I suffered from the fluoride and the learning that I did. I wasn't good at reading books, and I still re really am not, but the knowledge is so exciting it kept me pinned, and I can't do preparation for these talks. Uh, I just can't deal with text and words. It's very boring to me. It makes me want to go to sleep. And so the way that I've learned it is it's, it's, it's for somebody who can't keep their attention. So I tend to find myself putting it in ways that are very simple to understand, and almost as though I'm talking to myself. And I, thousands of times I've talked to individuals one-on-one, -on -one, so I've had many, many, many times to try to filter this down to words that are easily catchable and recognizable. And I, and I encourage you, there's no copyright on this work, to take it as much as you want to, to paste it, to put it anywhere, put your own name on it, I don't care. I want our planet back, I want the whole galaxy back. Now here we got a, a galaxy-wide infestation. So. Um, I really believe that we are each gods, and part of the evidence about me is that they have done everything they can to convince us that we're not gods. <clears throat> it seems to, put simply, it seems like a vibrational war. Everything they do makes them look terrified and makes us look powerful. Because you don't fluoridate and chemtrail creatures unless you're terrified of them. <clears throat> Um, <coughs> we're all, oh, thank you. we're all made out of water, so this probably appeals to your common sense, doesn't it? <coughs> Cars run on petroleum-based liquids, and when there's something wrong with it, you run petroleum-based fluids through it. We're based upon water. It's just that simple that pure water is the answer to cleaning up this body. But when you start doing it, we can use all the physical things to get us excited about gray hair or white hair turning back to black, eyeglasses being thrown away, wrinkles popping out, weight dissolving at about three pounds per week, or especially the worse off you are, the faster this works, and the faster you'll see changes. Um, and feel free to ask questions at any time. It kind of helps me to know what, what I'm leaving out and what's, what's burning in your mind. And we'll cover the whole thing. We'll just get there one way or the other. So, Andrew, can I just say that, so everyone, that, that in that bottle there is distilled water, and that's not an endorsement for a, a, a <laughs> mineral water company. You can put it in there. <laughs> I was just wondering about the kernel, kernel photography of testing water. Has anyone done that? Probably, but I haven't seen it. Um, that's a great, that's exactly what I do in my research is, mm -hmm. you know, you have insights of, oh, well, would this help me improve it? And then go, you know, just that simple search will probably show us something. Mm -hmm. I do like that Emoto mm -hmm. uh, has frozen it and mm -hmm. I think only when he puts intentions on it that it creates these crazy snowflakes, but the just distilled water uh, shows up as a perfect hexagon, which speaks volumes because yeah. that seems to be the shape that is Hex the basis hexagon. for Eight. the six-sided oh, six the flower of life, the, flower of life, yeah. the Merkaba, the, yeah. it's, it seems to be what they say everything is, comes out of, every shape <coughs> comes out of that, so that makes sense. <coughs> But then, go ahead. Still, I mean, I, I mean, let's just start from distilled water in this country, you know, which is literally the same in the States. You, know, you can buy it in, in, in garages or supermarkets, run through your irons and cleaning fluid. And, you know, whenever you read up information on distilled water, you get up 
whole barrage of uh, reasons why not to drink it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some of the stuff on the internet that you, know, you can explain, you can describe a bit more for us as well, but people haven't seen that. To know, to have a deal with why there's fake science against it. And how long have you been drinking it? Uh, I've been drinking distilled <coughs> water for two years, but distilled liquids, if you call, because that's what urine is, for roughly eight years. But even then, eight years ago, it was just me. I had no support mechanism. Uh, so I slowly came onto it as I got a lot of people telling me I was crazy and... Um, I would say roughly four years I've been drinking a lot of it. A lot of days will start out with that first, when you first wake up in the morning, you have a really big pee. And I'll usually drink all of that and just keep going. And a lot of times I won't feel hungry until two or three in the afternoon. Uh, just the water itself carries so much light. And that's what gives you energy. Huh? So that's an interesting point to me. So uh, do you find that you need to eat less? Way less. Yeah, and even, you know, the. There's two things to remember if you remember nothing else about this, this knowledge, is that one is that pure water is the cleaner for the body. The other thing is just as important is the method, is the volume. Four liters or a gallon, they're both the same thing. But I get no testimonials until people start doing that. And whenever they reach that level, they're testimonials of miraculous things. Miraculous compared to what Western medicine tells you is possible. But when you get to the four liter a day mark, it's, it seems to be enough of a river flowing through the body. And there's parts of your body that haven't seen the right amount of water in a long time. It's like an old, dry, ancient riverbed or a dried up sponge. And it takes a while for the water to seep into old cracks. And at first, four liters is very daunting to people, but it's a common testimonial. They just tell me, well, about two weeks in or so, it started becoming really easy. And it's because all the cells they get some water, they go, oh yeah, I remember what it was like to have full water. And actually, you know, the 50 trillion cells as a community start calling for it. And as a common testimony, it starts becoming easy to drink the four liters, and they often move up to five and six liters, because they actually start really craving it. So it goes from one end of the spectrum being hard to craving it. And, do you, and is that, I mean, could you drink enough urine? to be four liters a day. Yeah, uh, when I have measured, that's the part of the thing that can help you, a lot of people say, oh my god, a gallon a day, well that's too much. And you can beat them down with uh, the <coughs> number of doctors that have written the excellent distilled water books. They all recommend a gallon to a gallon and a half. Um, and in the urine therapy world, the basic treatment for somebody that's in trouble is to stop eating and drink all your urine. And when you do that, that daily volume is between a gallon and a gallon and a half. So it's what the body naturally does anyways. Yeah. And you know, you, you can control, the kidneys are a pressure regulator. And when you drink a lot of beer, you start peeing a lot. You're like, okay, we have to control the system. So you can actually dial in how fast, we call it looping, or right? somehow it's been a word we've arrived at because you pee in a cup and you just start <laughs> looping over and over and over again. And you can dial in the speed of the loop. You know, you can let a few go or save a few for external skin massages. Or if you're peeing not enough, you add a couple glasses of either fruit juice or beer. It can be any kind of water. It can be, it can be bad water because all you're ever going to piss back out is distilled water. So even if you get shipwrecked somewhere and you have no water source and you happen to be dehydrated at the time when you get shipwrecked or stuck in a place with food or water, um, you can, you can drink dirty water, even if it's got things that are normally will give you salmonella or poisoning. Since you have this urine system, which always vaccinates you against whatever's wrong with you, even if you picked up E. coli or anything from the dirty water, the urine system itself will immediately recognize it and combat it. So can I just ask, those, those ones that I get, that taste absolutely disgusting, uh -huh. and I decide that I can't face to finish it, should I make myself have every last drop of that? Because I'm tending to just go, no, I'm going to pass on this one, you know. It's Is that your morning one? 
sometimes, but that's if I've if I've got up and had a wee in the night and then and gone, oh fuck, I forgot to do that one. And then you know the morning morning one then is really strong. So um, it's the best thing is to drink all of it, right. but it's totally you. This is something you can completely control the speed at which this happens. And I'm glad of that too. I'm glad I don't have to be the message as well as the messenger because I have plenty of my own faults. Uh, I'm addicted to cooked foods. I, you know, I still might have chicken wing once a week. Uh, even when my fridge is full of fruits and vegetables, and we do a lot of juicing. I've kind of got my own issues where I go back and forth and. I've got toenail fungus that I'm trying to grow out, and I can literally watch. If I'm eating good, the new nails start to win, and but if I'm not eating good, the fungus starts to come back. It's literally a battle line. You can see the difference. Um, <clears throat> but I'm glad that everybody out there has every different skill sets. We all have different willpowers and different things that we're good at. And so for those of you who can just take this knowledge and run with it, the better, because you're going to light up more people as you go. Uh, one lesson you can learn from me is that I started telling people about it before I had any evidence of my own. So your friends and family will call you crazy. And I probably lost about 90% of my original family. Uh, mom and dad side. my mom drinks distilled water. She loves me, had a great mom. Still have a great relationship with her. But uh, this knowledge can be heartbreaking to hold because you'll know You'll start to know that you can take care of anybody. But getting them to believe you is a whole different story. And it's been way easier with me to talk to people who the less education they've had, and <laughs> being not a family member, <laughs> uh, has been much easier. And I can, I can convince a layman that I meet on the street in 15 minutes. I can spend three hours with somebody that's been to Rhodes, been a Rhodes Scholar, and get nowhere. A very, very distinct pattern. How about doctors? They're some of the worst. Uh, but the ones that will come out, I mean, that, that'll be great. Um, uh, Stephen Williams, who's a photographer, a filmmaker from Australia, he's making a urine therapy movie that's got me in it. He's been traveling the world, talking to urine therapy authors. And he just recently found a doctor who said he wanted to talk to me. But that's, that's the first time that somebody's actually Doctors tend to have the lowest lifespan in the white collar world. They die on average of 52. Oh, really? And so the layman, with his stupid knowledge, will live to 72. But even that's a joke. <laughs> uh, it should be six or 700 years of extreme minimum. Um, you're just basically watching cars. All these people are, I use the car terminology, works a lot, uh, allegory. They've never had the oil change. That's all it is. It's so simple. This actually, this knowledge works against itself. It's so simple, it's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. And I even had a family member tell me, he said, Andrew, well, if it sounds too good to be true, then of course it's not quick. Why did you get that... six or seven hundred years? Um, I would take that as a starting point because we're seeing people die at 60 and 70. And if you try to find ancient records of real lifespans, one place is the Bible, and you get 600 to 900 years a lot, and then uh, Moses at 600, Noah at 900. Um, and nobody wants to say immortal, but this may very well be what this knowledge points to. Anybody that has ever taken care of a machine perfectly it looks the same today as it did 20, 30, 40, 60 years ago. And we're not a machine that's made out of solid parts. We're made out of a machine that is individual. All these individual cells want to live. They all have their lives. And um, there's this whole bullshit about cells regenerate every seven years. Um, that's, they die after seven years. And we're dying after 70 years of pure abuse, 70 years of completely not following the instructions. That's why I call this the original cleaning and maintenance instructions, like the owner's manual. Those to change the water. Can you clarify, um, when you're talking about drinking distilled water, are you talking about the cleansing effect, the pulling out of the crap effect of no. it, as opposed to 
opposed to the mineralizing and hydrating effect of, say, drinking mineral water or spring water. Um, can you talk a bit about the, is, is that what you're saying, or is it the difference there? Yeah. Uh, people who are drinking mineral waters are killing themselves, and you cannot use those minerals. The only minerals that you can use are ones that are living. And it says right on the package of a mountain spring water, it says mountain. Mountain's made out of dirt. That's water that's been running through a dirt, and it's going to pick up dirt. But because it's microscopic, we can't see it, and we call it minerals without putting the proper chemical prefix on it, whether it's organic or inorganic, they just call them minerals. So if, say the minerals refined in fruits and vegetables are different to the minerals they're living. from the, the... The minerals in the dirt. Yeah, is there a plant in here? Okay. Right. So, so, sorry, let's clarify. You're saying that if, if you're on a desert island or you get strands or something like that and you've got no choice but dirty water, you can still clean out the system and and be healthy by drinking urine, even if the initial water is dirty. Yeah, I'm saying right. it's a way to top off the system. If the only okay. thing around is some yeah. brackish water, uh, you can use that to, but it's, you know, when there's no other shore. And you mentioned about going in the sea to hydrate as well, because that's important. Right, you can sit in the water uh, and just soak up water, and the salt that's won't come in. Mm -hmm. Or if you, not that there's enema kits on islands, mm -hmm. but the colon is a reverse osmosis filter too. That's how you can be sitting here and have feces inside you and not be dying. It only lets through what's good for you, or as well as it can. So you can do salt water enemas and just get the water and help fill your system back up that way. So, so just coming back to the mineral water, because I'm yeah. really interested about that. Yep. And some of us here drink Pear Tree Well, which is what we were writing back and forth about Pear Tree Well. Water, which is ionic. Sorry? Which is ionic minerals. Uh, OK, so I'm learning as I go. But I was interested when you were saying about the list of things that was in the water. Um, but you were saying that it's um, you're killing yourself by drinking that mineral water. I just wanted to clarify whether you meant you're act we we're actually actively harming ourselves by drinking that, or whether we're just not having live stuff in the water, therefore it's, it's like neutral, we're not enlivening. Do you see what I mean? It is like pouring <laughs> sand in the gas tank. You are right. harming okay. yourself. Okay. Uh, and the urine therapy is low enough to clean that out. It's any pure water will clean it up. That's what okay. we'll, this is about, is getting the purest water you can. So right. spring water? Huh? That's spring water would be pure. No, no, no spring water is deadly. Deadly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is missing is the discussion about whether you're talking about living minerals or dead minerals. Right. And they're also known as organic versus inorganic. It's nothing to do with the farm. It's not have to do with pesticides. Organic, organized, versus inorganic, unorganized, chaotic, chaotic, glowing, not glowing. Even if you have a live orange, you've got organic vitamin C in there. If you pasteurize it, now you've got inorganic vitamin C. It's dead. You hear talk about spin, things that are living spin clockwise, things that are dead spin counterclockwise. Is that only on this side of the planet? The I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if the planet starts spinning the wrong way, is it going to... Because yeah. on the other side of the equator, the water, it would spin a different direction, wouldn't it? Oh, well, I'm not talking about that so much. I'm talking about at the, supposedly at the molecular level, the way the electrons spin around the thing or so. When they're dead, I guess they spin counterclockwise. And when they're living, they spin clockwise. Um, yeah. Um, so a vortex-based uh, water purifier would be a good idea? Uh, as long as that's after the distillation. Uh, I don't care what kind of system it is, as long as the output is pure water. And you don't have to buy a distiller. Uh, it's whatever, it's, that's the fastest way to get there, because that's what it's designed to do. But it's whatever you do to get water as close to zero parts per million as possible. And the distiller usually comes out at zero. Okay, so there's a question about that, and urine, um, my partner tested, has been testing everything, every uh -huh. all sorts of waters, and urine comes up as really, really high, because yeah. it's got shitloads of stuff in it. Right. So, can you explain that, that yeah. one? How can it be a distilled water? Yeah. <clears throat> That's good, that helps us understand. <clears throat> This still is in the term itself. It means not still. 
lot of times when you buy these fancy spring waters, they'll, they'll give you two choices, bubbly or still. And right there, they're telling you, this is still because it's full of mud. And you know, the more rocks and dirt you add to a pool of water, the stiller it gets. It becomes mud eventually, it's not moving at all. You go the other way, the more rocks and dirt you remove, and eventually you're left with the fastest moving water in existence. But why is it fast? You know how when you have the same two sides of a magnet and you try to put them together, but there's like this invisible force field that don't want to go? Those are the same electrical charge. When you have the opposites, they snap together. They're attracted to each other. You've heard of opposites attract. This is the basis of the science for understanding this. And it's, it's just this simple. That pure water, its natural state, is to have a negative electrical charge. And everything that's not supposed to be in you has a positive charge. And that is how this knows what to pull out of you. It's because opposites attract. It's that simple. And you know, you even have bacteria inside you, but there's also harmful bacteria. The harmful ones get separated, get pulled out. It's just a clear, distinct line of what's not supposed to be there, this leaves, and what is not supposed to be there, it's magnetically attracted to it. And so, when all of the molecules of water in a body of water are totally clean, and they have their full, shiny, negative electrical charge shining out in all directions, if their shit stuck to them, they can't project their shine as much, right? They're clumped up. And, they, and when they <coughs> have things stuck to them of the opposite charge, they slow down. Right, something on this side now, stuck to you, can't walk as fast. So the more objects that are in that water, the more clumps, spots there are. There's more things stuck to each other. When they all have the exact same charge, they're all putting a negative electrical charge spherically in all directions. And they're all pushing away from each other. And that's why it's not still, because they're like slippery to each other. They're, they're totally looking for something else. To, they just want to get away from each other. And it's uh, the fastest moving water in existence on a molecular level. <clears throat> it's not still. And so, urine, fruit juices, living fruit juices, are also distilled waters because it's all living. And it all has a negative charge. Even though there's vitamin C in the orange juice, or vitamin C or uh, your hormones in your urine. They are all bioavailable living things which have a negative charge. So even though there's stuff in it, yeah, urine on average will come out at 4,000 parts per million. Um, when it's really dark, it'll be like eight to 9,000 parts per million. If you get it clear, it starts coming down 2,000 2, parts per million. If you start fasting, you can get it down to zero. <coughs> but they're all of the same charge, and you can produce uh, just you say water. Fasting, it goes down to zero cost you can watch if you have a, a meter, you'll start getting lower and lower and lower. Uh, what was your question? Just if you're on a continuous loop, yep. um, how then does your body eliminate these things that don't want to be in there? Because what's bothering you is the lie that it's a toxic waste channel. It is the only channel of output that is an excess channel. Whereas your feces, your breath, your fe uh, skin, armpits, these are excretory channels of excrement. Your urine is excess. It's excess water, it's excess vitamins, hormones, minerals. <clears throat> the liver, I used to say the kidneys were the real, were the distiller, but I understand, it's the both of them together. And the liver is the real serious water purifier in the body. There's a known scientific fact when <clears throat> blood leaves the liver totally clean, does not need any more cleaning, then it goes to the kidneys. <clears throat> and the kidneys, like I said, are, are regulating water pressure, and they're also controlling pH balance. And whatever you have of excess at that time, the kidneys shave off the top because they want to have an output of a perfect pH blood. And you can refer to them as leftovers, if you will what's in your urine, and you can choose to eat the leftovers if you want to or not. So you're saying the water will, distilled water will pull, pull out, say, heavy metals, toxins, etc. Uh -huh. 
-huh. You'll start that process, but the actual exit elimination routes are through the feces, through the breath, through the Yeah, skin. it's like the urine exactly. keeps going through and through and dumping off the liver, dumping off the liver, dumping off the liver, catching through, dumping off the liver, over and over and over and over and over again. And We're all drinking our urine right now, we don't realize it. About 90% of the urine you produce is going back into the system anyways. It's the only reason we're living. Uh, and in the science books, uh, one of the most expensive urine books I have is not about urine therapy, it's um, called Urinalysis and Clinical Laboratory Practice. It's the complete technician's book on urine. And the kidneys, on average, cycle through a thousand liters every 24 hours. Can't believe how fast your blood is moving through your system. And know that if you start to do this, you have to be aware of the detox symptoms. And you must not confuse them with the water making you sick. And in the propaganda against this knowledge, you will find many stories. Oh, my friend started drinking still water. He got sick. And you can see them list off vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, flu-like symptoms, terrible smelling pits, breath, feces that smell like petroleum, sinuses that smell like chlorine. All this, when you know that this is magnetically attracted to, piece by piece, all the garbage in your body, it's going to translate into real world events. You are going to start, if you get up to the, the proper volume, it's going to start to come out of you. Uh, but the body does not make any mistakes, and water especially does not make mistakes. It only detoxes you at a rate that it can, it only grabs things per molecule. There's no fear at all of an over-release of melting a huge deposit of garbage and it'll kill you. It takes things piece by piece as each molecule can hold what it can hold. And safely distributes it to your uh, exit points. Part of the proof of the body's wisdom <coughs> is that it only has a certain top speed at which it can eject garbage. And the reason people are slowly filling up with garbage and dying is because they're exceeding the rate at which the body can push it out. Three cooked meals a day is just sheer horrifying toxicity to the body. And uh, while well, I use our animals a lot, animals in the wild, as guides to figure out and remember how to live, they only put two things in their mouth. They only put living foods in their mouth, and they only ever drink the purest water they can find. Yes, if there's only pond or stream or lake water around or mountain spring water, they'll drink that. But if there's fresh rainwater around, they will go to that instead. Anybody can take, and just so you know, all of this knowledge applies to your animals. Your cats and dogs can be living twice as long as you expect them to. And if they're already in bad shape, take them off the horrendous cat and dog food, put them on distilled waters, and only offer them uh, raw foods. One frozen, find the cheapest white flash frozen fish you can, whatever. They will, you just watch them get better from your eyes. Can I just ask a quick question there? And that's an interesting one about observing animals. Why don't we see animals drinking their own urine? You do. If you Google animals drink urine, that's, that's one of the first okay. questions people ask. Bam, 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 bam. There's all these videos there. One of, uh, male monkeys will roll totally upside down and pee straight into their mouth. <laughs> Female monkeys will squat and put their hand between their legs. They'll keep bringing it up over and over again. I've seen a baby giraffe drink in mama's giraffe's waterfall. Dogs will pee on the floor and lick it up. Goats will lean over and pee straight into their mouth. But they say it's one reason why they consider to be so healthy and have such uh, healthy milk. <coughs> it's because they drink their own water. So if you're in a cell with nothing, you can still do it? Yeah. <coughs> if, you're, if you're in a room with nothing, you can still do it. Isn't that monkey, man? Right, the monkey man. Monkey. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately for women, this is much harder. Yeah. There's a lot of liquids lost trying to pee into your hand. It's a terrible cup. To me, I believe this is what the Holy Grail joke is all about, the search for the Holy Grail, is that there's really any vessel which you start to use. If you're on a co uh, on an island, that coffee cup floats off. <gasps> Holy Grail, because you've been trying to catch your pee every way you can, right? <laughs> All you need is a cup. Any vessel which, we, which you start to withdraw from the fountain of youth with is a holy grail. Uh, Do you have any more bottles of that? I'm getting really thirsty for some distilled water. If we actually brought cups, a bunch here. Have you got any cups or paper cups yeah. or anything? Okay. Okay. Don't don't have have cup. on there, help yeah. yourselves. Don't get thirsty. <laughs> you can just, you can just <laughs> bring that bottle and pass it around. Yeah. Peter, there's some cups just on the side, though. 
feet are flat. Right, yeah. Yeah. This is pops, <laughs> Am I missed? Well, there's two of you, brother. Just go and get a whole load, though. Yeah, good. You mean from the precipitation sources? Are you talking about distilled water or urine produced distilled water? Uh, there, especially when the skies are clean and we get rid of the chemtrails, uh, there are massive sources of distilled water. It's the only type of water that Mother Nature produces. Whenever she makes new water, she only creates distilled water. Uh, so all rain, mist, snow, dew, and fog, these are all distilled waters. And it's an attempt at making pure water. Nature's hydrologic cycle, things evaporate off the land and the ocean, they go up, they come down as precipitation, then they hit the ground, and they start picking up things, and they finally evaporate. And so you want to get the water, if you're looking for the natural sources, as soon as possible after it's been created. So dew is one of the most perfect, even with the chemtrails going on, dew just materialized it's in place. And I think, I haven't done it myself, but I'm guessing with the TDS meters, it would consistently show up as the cleanest water. Um, but people drinking the spring water and lake water, that's the oldest water there is. It's terrible. It's had lots of time to pick up dirt. And nobody, none of you, have any desire to eat a bowl of dirt. It's his natural. Uh, and you probably wouldn't still be sitting here if you kept up that habit. Um, even in the desert, is it in every desert? They they have dew every morning, or is that just a? Uh, I'm not sure. It sounds logical going from the hot to the cold that would make it. Um, there are. There's an article on the internet at rexresearch.com, I think, called Air Wells, Dew Dams, and There's a dew, dew, dawn, dew, sorry, dew Dams, or Air Wells, on the Downs, actually. There's about three or four of them. Really? Yep. Old ones? Old out ones. Out of use? Yep. Wow. They're all uh, dried up and not being used anymore, but they're there. You see, up near, uh, we, we saw them. Chantonbury. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go up to Chantonbury, turn left, up there. There's a new pond. Solar distillers are great. Any any community uh, that's trying to just get by on free electricity, solar distillers, you could have a whole area or field of your of your farm where there's just solar distillers. But you need some sun in England. Need some sun. <laughs> but you do have the daily dew, and you've also got the fog. Uh, and I know this is <laughs> 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 There are entire mountaintop communities that have fog fences. Huge banners of fabric that stretch, and as the mountain winds come across, it hits it, collects, and they have it driven off to one side. Wow. Um, is that where you're getting your water from? From where are you getting your still water from? Uh, I either make my own with my body, or I have a distiller at my house. Okay, and uh, what exactly is a distiller? What is a distiller? It's basically a boiling chamber that won't let the steam go anywhere besides into a condensing coil. And it's either cooled with water or has a fan blowing the air cools in it. And it makes it recondense and it drips side, drip by drip off to the side. I mean, I'm just interested really in trying to live as, kind of as naturally as possible. Uh -huh. and, uh, and about the practicalities of actually using a distiller to make distilled water versus the practicalities of collecting dew water how many of us actually have the option to be able to do that? Right. And having um, come off of drinking tap water and spent a year drinking water out of the spring and really noticing, noticing a significant difference mm -hmm. in um, my own personal experience, um, I'm interested in seeing what distilled water will do. But the practicalities of it. Right, there's no question that spring water, mountain spring water, are a thousand times better than tap water. Uh, 
but still, every single particle in it is a particle that you cannot use. Uh, when all these companies are proudly listing magnesium, potassium, and calcium on the side, they're purposely not putting the full chemical title because they have to write inorganic calcium, inorganic magnesium, inorganic potassium. Uh, well, if you want the cheap, I mean, if you're trying to live as easily as possible, then you have to be honest that you have your own water system. You have urine all the time, and that... Uh, it's up to your own self then to decide whether or not you can handle that. But it, uh, I believe that it is how you were designed to operate. Uh, if there was an intelligent design, this points to it. Uh, are you saying then uh, that I could just drink my urine? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, not even bother with the distilled water? That's right. Um, and uh, just live on a loop? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it just as effective when you, if you want to drink it, you don't get some water in it? Um, that's getting into degrees, but I have to say no, because you're diluting, if you're adding distilled water, this can't even touch the quality of distillation of your own water. Yeah. And so you're diluting with slightly dirty water. <laughs> so uh, but that gets, you know, it's like, you know, getting technical. Have you ever seen, like, just out of interest or whatever, started hydrated and then just drank urine, how long can you go? Because it depends how hot it is, but how long can you... Just well, luckily we have, I, I have over 20 urine therapy books, and um, it was when I was learning about raw foods that I invited Yogi over to my house, because somebody told me he was very knowledgeable about it, and I treated him like a human Google machine for two hours, and I was out of questions, he just all of a sudden goes, you know, you can drink your urine and cure just about anything. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I'll look up urine therapy. So it was that guy, and that's the only term you want to research, you got to just know that term, and all the books are there. So I ordered 20 books around the planet, and more than that now, and I've read at least a thousand testimonials. And there's the survivor class of testimonials, and those are people who were forced to be in that situation. And I've read testimonials as long as four months. Um, we luckily now have a man amongst us named Dave Murphy, who purposely just pretended as though the world had gone to chaos, and there was no food or water, even though we were surrounded by it, he went for 30 days, drinking only his own water, and no external water, no external nothing. And those are the ones that really, if you're trying to put the brakes on it, try not to believe that this is true. If you honestly take a look at the survivors, it, it forces everything over, because there's no way for it to be physically possible for these people to do this. Uh, According to all the, you know, but you got to have your protein, you got to 3,000 calories a day. It's all physical bullshit. And what people are really living on is the light. We're all light beings harvesting light, and pure water is a conductor for prana, for Tesla's radiant energy, for organ, for Wilhelm Reich's organ energy. You're a water-based creature, and we're all walking Tesla coils. If we had the machine cleaned out right and operating right, we would be conducting yeah. prana. Uh, and that's the only thing that can explain the survivors, because not only do they destroy any and all diseases that they had before they found themselves in a stranded situation, but by the time they're found, they are in the best health of their life, and they look like they found Ponce de Leon's Fountain of Youth. Their gray hair is turned back to blonde, they don't need their glasses anymore, their skin is all pushed back, uh, all the wrinkles are gone. And that's just the beginning, the, the mental clarity that starts to come. You, know, you can lure people in, especially grandma or anybody else if you want to get on this knowledge. Don't talk about the esoteric stuff. Just tell them about their health. And whether they know it or not, or realize it or not, they're going to help to light up this planet and vanquish the dark forces. Because your mental clarity starts to come, the brain starts to work better, you start to hear your intuition a lot more, and then from there, all the psychic powers you've ever heard of start to come on, clear audio, clairvoyance. <coughs> Telepathy, uh, even I know biolocation will be a part of it. Everything I, I, I sum up to people if you start drinking pure water, all your dreams will come true. And you'll find out eventually that I'm not kidding when I say that. How much of your own water and for how long do you need to be drinking it before people are noticing like, major health problems? Well, I mean, Okay. It depends on how, how fast you press the accelerator. The fastest you can do is 30 days if you stop eating and drink all of your urine, a urine fast, 
that is the ultimate pedal to the metal. Um, I'm seeing 90 days, and in general, the, since this is not as perfectly distilled as urine, it takes about three to four times to achieve uh, what urine will achieve, um, drinking the same volume per volume. And not eating anything. Right. Or drinking anything. Yeah. And, other than well, just you can drink whatever you want. That, that's, it's not extreme, but it, 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 it's, you can drink whatever water you want. That, it'll only slow it around by degrees because it's not as distilled. Uh, but the vast majority of case studies I've read, it's when people are drinking whatever additional water they feel like. It's only the survivor class and Dave Murphy that are in this one category of people <laughs> who have done it without. I mean, that's a real gift that that guy did for all of these. Some of you can talk to and... Um, can I just uh, ask about that on, on Dave? Because I've, I've known Dave for like a couple of years or whatever. And, um, he was quite a rotund kind of guy when I when I knew him. And I see he's lost a lot of weight through through doing this. I mean, I'm quite a skinny fellow, and the winter's coming up. I get cold in the winter. I mean, what do you know much about the weight loss of things? Because I, I could do actually with this and too much weight. At Sorry. Myself. Um, is that something that automatically happens, or does the body comes it? back to perfect? If you're underweight, you come up to weight. If you're overweight, you come down to weight. As Dr. Hanish put it. I'm paraphrasing, but he said all cells normalize. All cells return to their normal state. And that covers everything. Um, water's heavy, so if you're underweight. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 42, uh, born in 1970, March 23rd. I've always been kind of like this, though, even if I ate a lot, so I can't really. Um, I should be probably pretty overweight compared to the way I have enjoyed food. Uh, but my family tends to be skinny, my mom's skinny, so I can't necessarily attribute it to that. Can, can you still be active? Um, you've got any athletes in sports teams doing it? I don't, but I know I've, uh, Anna Hildesmith have found this testimonial of a guy that would only let his team bring distilled water, and they were a very successful team. I would love to see a football Ewing. club secretly all yeah. the players on the ground. Yeah, I was thinking about Ewing rather than distilled. Well, if you can get him to do that. Uh, there's a boxer who drinks his urine, is very successful. Uh, I know there was a baseball slugger who never wore gloves. All players wear gloves. He peed on his hands every time before he went up to bat. Never wore gloves. Makes your skin very strong. Very soft. Yeah. Um, in some of the literature that I've come across, there's a recommendation that it begins, if one's drinking urine, to do it in small amounts to begin with. Um, and I'm wondering what your view is on that. Uh, I was told to begin with um, um, in the morning and leaving the first bit and, um, and then leaving the last bit. And um, what do you think of that? Uh, that is a joke. <coughs> to, in my opinion, it's incorrect. It's people hedging their bets. It's called collecting the midstream only. And. Uh, I personally have never done that, and I'm still alive. Uh, it starts to fall apart when you look at it. The first reason they give to avoid, you know, say literally, like, pee out a second or two, catch all the rest of it, and then don't catch the last couple of seconds. Okay? Now, for one thing, how do you know where the poison is starting? Yeah, where yeah. It ends? <laughs> where it begins and ends? The reason they give to not drink the first part is because there might be bacteria on the exterior opening of the urethra. But whenever you study urine theory, the very first thing you learn about it is it's one of the most powerful antibacterial liquids in the world. So who gives a shit? Uh, <laughs> and if anything, it educates you. When you realize how true this is in that drinking your own urine, as Magenta put Pixie put it, like, distilled water is like a blank CD. It's very, just like Emoto's photo of distilled water, it was a blank six-sided hexagon, ready to become anything or to learn anything. So your own water has a complete imprint of you. If the universe is a hologram, that's liquid crystal holographic you. And this will empower you beyond belief. You do not need to worry or be a pansy about hand sanitizing gels or drinking after anybody else's cup. If I drink after somebody that has AIDS, all it's gonna do is educate me on how to combat AIDS. 
if you're drinking your own water, because it's in the kidney sent through only homeopathic sized dots of everything that's wrong, wrong with you. And they're called antigens. And these two lymph nodes create antibodies. So antigens of whatever's wrong with you is in your pee. So if you've got the flu, or you just drank somebody's water that has tuberculosis. When you drink your pee, all it's going to do is teach you how to beat tuberculosis. I've had the pee of somebody with sickle cell anemia. It's actually totally incurable. You guys know what that is? Yeah. The body starts producing blood cells that look like knives, sickles, and they have to get a blood transfusion every three months. <clears throat> because their body's not producing correctly shaped blood cells. And after about three months out on average from a fresh blood transfusion, they get to what's called a crisis state. They can't even move. They have a thousand shards of glass everywhere in their body is what it feels like. And they have to go to the hospital forever, the rest of their life. And as they get older and they get sicker and worse, it becomes every two months. Um, I gave this knowledge over a year ago to a 25-year-old who it's hereditary. He and his mom both had it. Uh, he had yellow eyes. Your eyes get yellow. And when he first started drinking a gallon a day, he went six months before he needed a blood transfusion. And uh, since that last one, he's gone over a year. He's completely stopped getting blood transfusions. His body's completely producing proper shaped blood cells again. And this is a totally incurable disease. So more proof of all cells normalized. I'm wondering about things like um, lightly brewed drinks, which is always a staple in the Bible, and so on, light wine and light beers, because there is a, a totally bioactive, live process going on, and people are drinking kombucha and so on. Is that water then live and distilled in the same way? That's a good question. Um, I would definitely say things that are, you mean fermented, not brewed, right? Fermented, yeah. It's about a light ferment. So the wine actually in the Bible is actually not what we have now. Right. It's actually a very light ferment, <clears throat> and that will purify the water from the bacteria and the pathogens and whatever else. And that's why the monks uh, in London during the plagues and so on survived, whereas people didn't. That sounds logical to me. I've never uh, specifically looked into kombucha, but I do see this pattern of people seem to really, really like it. Um, so I can't. But surely you could use the The thing is, you don't need. To, you wouldn't need to because the bacteria is actually chewing on all the bits and so on and making it bioactive in one go with nothing more than a fungus and some tea. I mean, I've been drinking Ian for about ten years, and I feel like I'm getting younger. What, you know, what's Ian? You are at that time. Do you get younger? Yeah, I would say any living, if, they're, if they are still living, that, yeah. that for me is the drawing line. Um, so is it okay to go, in effect, hot turkey and just start drinking all your pee straight away? Yes, you can. You can just, uh, yeah, that's kind of also how you ask that question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, every reason you could think of why they would say to take it easy first is because it's going to detox you. You might not be ready. Maybe I want you to slowly get used to the fact that it, when you, first time you ever drink a full pint of pee, you won't believe how like 10 to 15 minutes later you will have to run to the toilet. It is amazing. Amazing drain on liquid pipe cleaner. Well, and, and for me, it brought up loads of emotional stuff as well uh -huh. when I first was doing it. Just probably trapped in garbage and mm. start losing up the garbage and things come out. Which could be, which could account for the, you, you mentioned earlier, pungent, like sometimes it was pungent or sometimes it was, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, I, I just, I wonder on that as well because um, uh, Rowan and I, um, when I first came here, we, we had a conversation with Bobby Island in the kitchen and we just thought it all sounded really inspiring and we jumped straight into it straight away. We just happened to be kind of hanging out in the same house at the time. So we were we were eating kind of good, healthy, kind of green stuff and we both started drinking straight away everything. Mm -hmm. We didn't wait, we didn't 
temporarily just thought we'll just do it straight away. Do it, and all. Do it all. Just do it all. Yes. Yeah. And we both noticed really good. I'm sure you won't mind me saying because we talked about it a lot here with workers around. And we, we, all, we both noticed really good positive results straight off straight off the bat immediately. And in fact this week I haven't been drinking my weed for a while and I've stuffed again this week with pear tree water because I'd run out of distilled, which is why I was interested in the different makeups. And the, 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 the toothache was so appalling, the amount of painkillers I was having to take last week and I was like panicking about not being registered for the dentist and I don't have any pain at all. It's, it went within a couple of days of drinking urine again. But I was just when you said about the pungency, emotional emotional content in urine come I feel in limited experience comes through as does if you're eating a lot more junk than good stuff. Because I noticed the very very straight away the first morning that we sort of, you know, I peed and went to drink it, which I did, um, I noticed that it just put you in an immediate proximity connection with self. Because suddenly you're far more present and conscious with what you're putting in this end. If, if you're going to be drinking again. And that was even before I realised sort of where excretion goes and whatnot. But the emotional, I don't know if that's really the bell. But I was interested in the answer to that question, which I wasn't sure that we got, which is why would it sometimes be pungent or strong as opposed to not? Um, well, I allow for the emotional aspect of it well, uh, but you can, uh, you can clearly see that what you eat, <coughs> Miles, and once you start drinking, you start becoming very aware of how your yeah. diet affects it. And it only has to taste nasty if what you're putting in is nasty. Mm -hmm. Cooked foods will immediately turn pleasant urine into awful urine. And vegetables, even raw, can make it taste nasty compared to fruit. Um, and I, it, to simplify, I think the basic diet in paradise is fruit and pure water. And that, across the board, produces urine that is on the other end of the spectrum, whereas when you're a typical cooked food eater, nasty urine, you won't believe it, but it can actually get to the point where you, it's enjoyable to drink. It has a slightly sweet, slightly coconut flavor. Uh, you know, babies smell, smell sweet. That's how we're all supposed to smell. And they smell sweet because they have no toxins inside them. That's a normal smell of a human. We can all get back to that state. Uh, and you can stay there. And uh, it, literally, you'll find it's like, oh, God, I can't believe that came out of me. Mm -hmm. And it'll become clearer than rainwater, too. You can get there within five days. You're gonna rainwater clear pee within three to five days. Wow. She had a question, sorry. So it's just, um, two questions, just one real kind of simple question. Um, first, which is um, if, um, if you're drinking your own urine and you're sweating, you're gonna lose fluid, right? How does that work? Because you breathe both ways. Uh, and Dave Murphy actually, on purpose, that's a lot of people's first questions, yeah, but once you run out of water, when you're talking about the survival situation, you breathe inwards, your skin breathes inward also. I believe the human body is not only a distiller, but it's a condenser. And uh, Dave Murphy purposely, he worked a hard day of labor. He carried building materials 100 yards across his yard to the outside, built a structure all by himself, climbing all over it, tore it down all by himself, all in one day, and carried all the stuff back across the yard all in one day. And he said he actually didn't sweat nearly as much as he normally would have, as though the body was controlling what's going on. And I asked him, I said, by the end of the 30 days, were you out of water? And he said, no, I had the exact same volume flow that is when I started. And so that, that yeah, that really puts the brain on flow. There seems to be a phenomenon when I've drunk my urine that it seems that you start producing more, like starting to need to, almost like you can't keep up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying, you can, that's what I mean, you can control the speed of that. Um, and for anybody interested in the Merkaba and Ascension and keeping your own energy field <coughs> alive, um, it's called the Fountain of Youth and you see little boys peeing in fountains all across the planet because it's a, a hidden pictogram for the fountain of youth. It's a fountain in its youth, and it follows this pattern. The pump pulls it back up in the statue, round and round it goes. Pee into the glass, down the, down the statue, round and round it goes. Uh, it's following the exact same path of the Taurus Mercado field. And water is a conductor of light, and when you do this, and the more pure it is, the more light it conducts, 
that is known scientifically that just one time through the human body, urine is more sterile than distilled water. Science cannot make a machine that can come even close to matching the quality of water that your body can build. And that's just one time through. So in science labs, they have double and triple distilled water. They want to use the most perfect water they can for their lab experiments. You can go 10, 100, 1,000 times distilled by the best distiller in the universe. You have no idea what's coming to you. You thought that you knew what water felt like. When you start drinking distilled water and you start drinking your urine and you get past the yellow stage mm -hmm. and you start eating clean, you start eating lots of fruit, lots of water, it's not the flavor anymore. Water is not supposed to have a taste. You see a lot of people, yeah, but I like the taste of my spring water. That ought to be a flag right there that you like the taste of it. It's not supposed to be any taste. It gets into the texture. It becomes smoother. You can't believe how smooth it is. Even just the plastic contained store-bought water is smooth. You know, sometimes you've been really thirsty and you want to chug water, but it doesn't seem to go down. It's because there's invisible rocks and sand in that water. It doesn't matter what mood you're in. When you bring some pure water to your mouth, it just flows down. And when you stay, you, know, you get your distiller right on, if you get a double distilled, or you actually get into your own water, people start using the word fluffy to describe it. And I, I said it myself once, and I've seen other people who didn't even hear me, they started using the water to describe it. Remember I said the negative charges are pushing away from each other? When you get into finer and finer distilled water, that push becomes stronger because they're even cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And so it's almost like the water becomes expansive. <coughs> It becomes so, you just can't believe how smooth it gets. And it's something you've never experienced. And uh, when you do, it'll, it'll be a delight, and it's, it's waiting for you. Yeah, you said you could double distill. I've just got a distiller. You can actually put distill the water on it, put it back in, clean out the machine, and put it back in the machine, and distill yeah. it a second time, and it will. Yeah, and there's even distillers that purposely go through two cycles or through three cycles. They have wow. different chambers. Uh, but it's not really necessary. It's about how close you get to zero. And I can't tell you or stress to you enough how important that the volume per day aspect of it is. I get no testimonies from around the world, people that drink a liter or half liter per day. Uh, or, or two liters. I'm trying to put it into liters, but I'm just talking gallons. Uh, a gallon is four liters. Uh, no testimonies really drink at one to two liters. The testimonials come in starting at four liters and above or a gallon a day. No testimonials from a quart to a half a gallon a day. What if you're just drinking your own urine? Yeah. Lim yeah. Lim it lim still lim depends upon still what that, that volume much. is. And yes, really? you can probably okay. dial down the amounts a little bit because it's so much more finely distilled. Right. But it is really when you get that flow going, you've had 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50, 60 years to allow these deposits to get hard and settle. Maybe once you're totally clean, the whole standard eight mm -hmm. uh, quarter liter glasses a day would be fine. Uh, or at least in America, say eight, eight ounce glasses. Maybe that, that's probably fine once you're totally cleaned out. But to get this thing started and to get, start dissolving the ancient deposits, I and mean, you've got food in you ate when you were three years old still. <coughs> this stuff is hard and it's had a long <coughs> time to settle. You need that flow to really work on it, to saturate the body, to soften it up, and different detox symptoms will happen at different periods because different deposits are different densities and they let go at different times. And so you might, you might find weird rashes on your arm one day, and that you just move. Start to look forward to the detox symptoms. Even though they're uncomfortable, it means that garbage is leaving. But it's only temporary. It can only last as long as you have garbage inside you. After that, you're totally free and clear. So can I just uh, Some people do, and they try to uh, drink their water more towards the first part of the day. One thing my wife and I do is we call it the half hour, half gallon challenge because it rhymes. Uh, that's uh, two liters. We drink nothing, we consume nothing else. It, if I'm not doing urine, whatever, but for people that aren't doing urine, you put down two liters of water when you first wake up and before anything else goes down. And then you've only got two more liters to drink for the rest of the day to get up to your four liter quota. And so try to finish off by dinner time if that bothers you. And then you can have a few peas and let them go if you're not drinking any urine. Um, so that's when people sleep better. On the distiller, um, a lot of them say that you need a charcoal filter. Uh -huh. What's your view on that? It's absolutely necessary. And this 
that itself helps you to prove the conspiracy against the knowledge. Um, nature's method of distillation uses low heat, the, the evaporation thing to get the water, you know, when the water leaves the garden behind, it floats up in the sky. That's evaporation, that's low heat. Charcoal filters is because it's a known scientific fact that in water there are things called VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and they have a boiling point just under that of water. And so when you use this artificial method, and there's artificial methods that are low heat, you know, there's the fog fences, the dew dams, the air wells, solar distillers, those all work on the evaporation level, so you don't need to worry about charcoal for that. But with a high heat method of boiling, carbon catches VOCs. VOC, what's that? Volatile organic compounds. They're things like benzene, chlorine, which they love to put in our water. Um, those will make it through the distiller if you don't have a carbon filter on there. Um, and so they do carbon filtration because it's known that that's what it catches. And so when I say that properly distilled water will come to zero parts per million, I mean with a carbon filter in the process. And I challenge you to find a distiller for sale that doesn't have carbon filtration as <coughs> part of it. It's such a well-known fact that they all come with carbon filters. The little countertop models have a post-carbon filter. After it's gone through the whole machine, it has to drip through this little changeable thing. The auto-fill distillers, which are much more convenient uh, because they fill themselves up. They have levers inside them. They have a water line running to them. Um, they have a pre, they have a, a carbon filter about this big on the line going in. So they have pre-filter and a post-filter. I'm all for it. The more, I'd even consider putting two of those on the line coming in. Whatever you got to do, once you get a TDS meter, which is about 15 bucks or pounds, uh, 10 bucks, you can test to see how your water's coming out. <clears throat> Hang on, sorry. To help you see the conspiracy. Your biggest issue with trying to spread this water is an article on the internet called Early Death Comes from Drinking Distilled Water. So as you tell anybody about this, they're going to go Google distilled water, and when you do that search, always without fail, it's either the first hit or it's the first, second, or third one. It's always on the first page of hits is that article with that title. It's full of fake science, and it again shows how desperate they are, how terrified they are, because they fucked up big time trying to print that article. Uh, any biochemist that's uh, is into speaking truth, will read that article and will not be able to get through it without laughing because it's such a joke. Um, <clears throat> and that's sponsored by Dr. Mercola. And a lot of people love Dr. Mercola. But as far as I can tell, he's an agent of death and deception. And I believe that his number one job in the UN organization and the UN's Agenda 21 to lower the population, he is the front man for the distilled water will uh, theme. <clears throat> He hosts that article, and he sells inferior water filters. He will not sell distillers. The article is written by Rona P. Ziegler, some retarded doctor up in Toronto, Canada. Um, one thing, and I'll come back to carbon filters in it. One thing in it that's just blatantly obvious to anybody is one of the four main reasons they get to stay away from distilled water is because a lot of soda companies start with distilled water. And they say, yeah, that's a known fact that soda leaches calcium from the bones. And that's the main thing they try to scare you with. When you read this article, it starts off with saying that do not drink distilled water because it will leach minerals from the body. It's an on-purpose half-truth where they're purposely leaving out the thing where you distinguish what type of minerals you're talking about. It's impossible for distilled water to leach organic minerals from your body because of the magnetic attraction. It can only leach out the inorganic ones because of opposites attract. But they write it, do not touch distilled water because it will leach minerals from the body. As a, an open-ended statement, not bother to make the distinction. And most people don't even know about this difference between organic and inorganic. Even if you did, they just leave you to assume that it leaches both types. It's known as the greatest solvent known to man. And so that's how they mainly scare you away from it. Is that, you know, it'll leach the calcium out of your bones and you'll crumple to the floor, or take the potassium out of your heart, you'll have a heart attack. Um, So again, distilled only leaches pork. Inorganic. Inorganic. Everything dead. So for minerals. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of those. I take no supplements myself. Uh, in this article, they tell you, as another proof that distilled water is deadly to you, they say soda is made with distilled water. Okay? For one thing, after you add all the things that make it soda, it's not distilled water anymore. Right? <coughs> Completely ignore the fact that there's 40 tablespoons of sugar in a can of Coke that has got carbonic acid and phosphoric acid. And, of course, the body gets minerals leached from it. That's how your body deals. When you, have a, when you drink acids, your body re will you know, release calcium to negate it. So, yes, yeah, soda leaches minerals from the body, but it's not the distilled water in it that's doing it. So, that article written by Ziegler is on Mercola's page, and, then, and that was like maybe 2008 or so, or six that that was published. In 2010, now Mercola's got his own paper that he put his name to. He says, why I now say no only to distilled water. And one of his paragraphs and proofs for it was all about VOCs. He said, do not want to drink distilled water because it, the VOCs make it through it and actually concentrates them. And this is deadly. You've got things like chlorine and uh, benzene and all these awful chemicals that make it through the distillation process. You want to stay away from distilled water because it can't, it, 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 mess, it misses VOCs. That's what I say. I challenge you, try to find a distiller that sells their distillers without carbon filtration being part of the process. He is posing on somebody that's supposed to massive expert on distilled water, enough to write these papers to tell you that it'll kill you. In that entire paragraph about VOCs, zero mention of the known fact of using carbon filters to deal with VOCs. It's propaganda written on purpose to scare you away from it. It completely, purposely does not, and that's why I mean, these articles aren't written by accident. You have to be creative to come up with distilled water being what kills you in soda. Yeah. And you have to be creative to write a paragraph about VOCs and distilled water and try to find a way to not mention carbon filters. But without the carbon cinder filters, how much VOC would be dangerous? Uh, it's nasty. You will know. If, if you distill water that has, you know, especially city water, a lot of chlorine in it, what you will get is pure water and it'll have ingredients in it, and it'll be nothing but VOCs. Everything else has been taken out, and so it'll taste like plastic. If you distill your water and it tastes horrible, you probably forgot to put the carbon filter on it. Or if it's time goes by, one month or three months, the filter gets full, and it can't pick them, and you've got to replace the filter. This is one of the lowest maintenance water systems there are, and the cheapest, and they run for decades. These are simple machines and uh, they should be standard equipment in all kitchens. How, how much are they? Um, 176 quid for one with a glass jug, and that's with postage. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, that, and how quickly is that, sorry, how practical is it? So if you had one of those in your kitchen, 160 pounds, 170 pounds, how long do you have to learn, wait for that to do? It takes about three and a half hours to make one gallon or four liters. Right, okay, so you but do I do cheat, I, I use boiled water. <coughs> So I put in hot water so it's already hot and then starts the system rather than heat because the machine will heat your water from cold and to me that's personally a waste of time because yeah. it's still got to get hot. That's so I actually tap, put hot water in. Is that from the tap so you boil the kettle from the you tap? You can put any yeah. water in there you yeah. want. Yeah. Any water you put in. Are there any systems you can just link up to your tap? Oh, so it's mostly, so it's yeah, you could have you could have a distiller that's under counter or off kitchen somewhere with a, a line coming in and feeding it. You might have a special spigot. Um, Is reverse osmosis the same thing? That's the next closest thing. Um, it generally comes in at two to four parts per million, and you've already got that. That's fine. Just if you get on the volume part of it, even though it's four parts per million instead of zero, this is a category. This is something that's close enough. Is good enough. Um, I don't know at what point you're at diminishing returns when you start to call it not distilled. I've never seen a chart of that, so I don't know where. But I would just roughly say, you know, anything under five to ten parts per million is really clean compared to other things. 
I told my girlfriend I was coming to this talk and she said if I'm going to start drinking urine, I'll have to brush my teeth before I kiss her. Uh -huh. Have you got any words of reassurance other than <laughs> toothbrush? Uh, unless you start to get the clean urine. See, there again, everybody's used to urine being nasty. If you get to the coconut water, she's going to want to kiss you. <laughs> um, but, you know, a splash of juice, but if it's still nasty, you know, even if you rinse your mouth out, this stuff is like, when it's, when, especially when it's, when it's yellow, there's a lot of ammonia in it, mm -hmm. and it like seems to exude up through your nostrils. And it mm -hmm. seems like there's fumes coming out, especially if you put down a big pint of it. So even if you were to rinse your mouth out with water, uh, they'll still, ooh, interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to say coconut. Can I um, <coughs> backtrack a little bit? It seems clear that yeah. if I'm looping on my own system, it's got my own antigens in it, and my body can read what it needs to do. Um, but I've heard stories of uh, people uh, in India, for example, would, would drink the urine of a bull or something like that. So my question isn't directly on that. It's like, um, so I drink my own system, but how does it work if I drink someone else's system? I'm not going to do that, but how does that work? What would you say about that? Well, you can drink your cancer. dog's piss and it would cure you of cancer. Wow. It's really, it's the water that's doing it. When you're going for the overall body flush out, um, <laughs> it's really the water. And that's why they drink cow urine, because it's just, you know, everybody, they're grossed out by themselves, I guess. And they go around, it's sacred to collect <laughs> cow's pee. They make cow urine soda and everything. Um, but there is that, you know, Urine will stop allergic reactions in real time. Uh, even anaphylactic shock, it'll stop it. Um, and so, it generally, before I had understood <coughs> vibrations and spirit, I would have said, yeah, for specific things, like if you've got the flu, you need your urine with the flu antigens in it to cure you. But when you start expanding more and going into that the universe is a hologram and the vibrations are everywhere. If you're having an allergic reaction, a bottle of water nearby should have the information in it, especially if it's pure distilled water, because it can, it can be encoded with what's going wrong with that person having an allergic reaction. Or somebody else's urine in the room also should have the vibrations of that information in it. And uh, that's. <coughs> That's one trick I've heard to deal with kids that are dying from allergic reactions. You can't get their pee from them, but if somebody can secretly go around the corner, get some pee, and go, here, take this medicine, and put a, a gumdrop in it so it changes the color, and it's, it's medicine now. Um, but it, it is really the water that's the workhorse of the job. And there is another specific uh, you specific incident is whenever you get bit by a spider or snake or anything poisonous. Um, I'm definitely allergic to wasp stings. My father is too. We look physically similar. We both are allergic to walnuts and wasps. And I've totally erased the walnut allergy now because of the continued drinking of it. Um, at the height of a reaction, I get just my mouth breaks up in sores when I eat walnuts, and my dad does the same thing. When we were kids, I could know if I had banana bread. Somebody didn't tell me it would break out in sores, and so I knew it had walnuts in it afterwards. Now I eat walnuts like candy uh, because it's such a minor allergy that the continued drinking of it, and I started not caring about an eruption, it educated me. It, it, it permanently erases allergies as well as stopping in real time. And I'm definitely allergic to wasp things that have to carry on an EpiPen. They stab in my leg. If I get bit by a wasp, I go into anaphylactic shot. My chest will shut down and I'll die. But uh, after I learned about urine, I've been stung by wasps three times since then. And there's a lot of biting insects where I live in the South. Um, whereas before, I was 10 minutes away from dying. My skin was itchy. My started hives, red blotches. The <coughs> chest was starting to get tight. I went to an emergency room, it looked like a five hour wait if you just had a simple broken finger or something. They didn't let me sit but 10 seconds before they called me in. They surrounded me with doctors and nurses and put liquid Benadryl in one arm, antihistamine and liquid IV and oxygen in the face and they manually calmed me down. After I learned <coughs> about urine, I got stung by a wasp. I go, whoop, here's my chance. I got stung on the forearm. And um, you know, I told you a thousand liters per day moves to the kidney. That flow is really fast. So probably within five seconds, the information is there. But wait 15 seconds. Pee out in your hand. All you need is like 10 drops. Put it under your tongue. 
And it doesn't matter if it's a coral snake, I've read testimonies for black mambas, it does not matter what poison <coughs> it is, antidote will always be in your urine. It doesn't matter if it's a scorpion or anything. And so I put my urine under my tongue and sat there at the kitchen table with the car keys in one hand and the EpiPen in the other. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Absolute silence on the part of the body. Three separate times. And never a single reaction. I probably wouldn't react anymore, but I didn't take, um, my body probably knows now. And I thought about the last time I saw about not even doing that, just to see what happened. <laughs> Let's see if it would know, and, but I didn't take that chance. Uh, but zero, zero reaction. Andrew, is it not like you told me last week? <coughs> What they do with the urine, do they sell it to the pharmacy companies? Yep. Uh, wherever you see, well, certain companies do it. And I'll get to you next. Uh, <coughs> a lot of times men pee off to the side in the portable urine <coughs> uh, at construction sites or at ball games. I know in America there's a company called Portageon, and they actually have a urea catch underneath there. And back in the 90s, the owner of Portageon was making half a billion dollars a year by selling our urine to Merck, oh, no. wow. yes, yes, yes. No. Yes, yes. Almost all the new drugs that you hear of, they find the answer in urine and then work at making a synthetic version of it. Uh, women that go through uh, menopause and need hormone replacement therapy, a common drug is Premarin, and it really stands for pregnant mare's urine. Uh, a lot of people have used murine eye drops. It stands for M urine, it's mare's urine. So you put a oh. horse piss in your eyes rather than your own. Uh, there's over 500 horse farms in North America alone where there are horses who are being force-fed water with tubes permanently sewn to their bladders. Mm. And people work on rescuing these horses because they're being tortured daily for their urine. Because uh, they don't want to let the secret out to humans. A lot of times when you see urea or uric acid on the side of very expensive skin cream, that's horse piss. One of the supermodels' biggest secret is to put some urine on your face at night. Let it air dry, go to bed, wash off in the morning. Urea enables each individual skin cell to hold its maximum amount of water. And all the wrinkles are is dehydrated skin cells. So at the same time that you're giving them urea to enable them to hold the maximum amount of water, you're also providing them with the ultimate water in the universe, and they go and fluff right up. Even in one day, you can... Just you can take a bowl of urine and just go like this with your hands for 10, 50. You won't believe how quickly it'll change to a buttery, soft leather. Skin will do the same thing. And it's good to let it air dry. If you're in the bathroom, you want to put a few coats on your face. Let it air dry in between each coat because it gets locked into the cell. And then put a new coating on. And then put it like basting a turkey over and over again. Uh, if it's continually wet, it doesn't absorb as well. It's a more efficient method for it to put the ingredients that you give it when you let it dry each time. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned your hair going back to its natural color. Uh -huh. I was just wondering if you knew what sort of time frame that happened and yep. scientifically how that happens. Well, will hair regrow? Yes. yes. Uh, I have three people who are all or were pure bald. They had six to eight inch bald spots. They all have new lawns of hair in those spots. Uh, in where I live in South Carolina, alone, I know three people who are in their 70s to 80s and have pure white hair for two years. And all of them now, their hair is turning from white to gray to black. And um, Greg Prescott, who has a fantastic website called in5d.com, that's I-N-5-D, number five. He himself uh, has published my work and drank a gallon a day of Walmart purchased plastic contained water, didn't ever touch his urine, and 90 days out, his hair had almost entirely turned from gray to pure blonde. Uh, so that's a rough, 90 days out <coughs> is a rough time when I start to get testimonials of miraculous nature things, things that are not supposed to happen. Uh, eyeglasses being thrown away, cataracts dissolving, um, but 30 days, <coughs> if you, that's, you can start having your hair regenerate 30 days if you stop eating, drink all of your urine. But Greg was eating and was not touching urine. Just, he was eating a relatively healthy diet um, and drinking a gallon a day of distilled water. And so that is a rough time frame 
somewhere between 30 to 90 days. 90 days also, I think you could get a crown shocker burst, totally unfreeze the pineal within 30 days if you're at maximum speed. 90 days tends to be a time when people start to see more light literally inside the head if they're just drinking distilled water, a gallon a day. People reported crown shocker bursts to me. Yeah, I, I would say it's due to toxic overload. Uh, fluoride, you know the double twisted de shape of your DNA? Mm. And there's little ladder rungs in between? Mm. Those are called hydrogen bonds. And fluoride dissolves those. And your DNA literally unravels. Mm. This is what's causing all the allergies. The body can't operate from the body. The DNA repair kit in each cell works at about 50% capacity when you're fluoridated and it acts like it's drunk you have to try to do a job. Can't repair things well. And so that can account for a lot of in-house screw-ups. And um, they are light antennas, your DNA. And you start cycling pure water through there and pure light and they're going to rebuild themselves. All cells will normalize and that should come out of you. It should start to operate properly. Uh -huh. um, I'm feeling like I want to go for a pee now. Uh -huh. So if I drop my in my urine now, and then I just start drinking still water from now on, is that is that going to start? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I mean, if you're drinking nice. a couple of liters a day, yep. that's a lot of pee. So you just keep drinking the liters and the urine? Just so long as your total volume combined, whether it's fruit juices, <coughs> precipitations, urine, or artificially made distilled water, the total combined volume should be between four to six liters. <coughs> and so it's whatever combo you want of those. Mark? I was just think of the, um, when growing up on, by the seaside, we were always told that if you get hit by a jellyfish and stung badly, get someone to pee on you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's old wives tale and it works, but it also demonstrates that this knowledge actually is functional and it's being used even if it's been ignored everywhere else. It right. appears in an episode of Friends. Ooh, yeah. right. must be back. It's very, very ancient knowledge. There's a 6,000-year-old Indian Sanskrit document called the Shivambu Kalpa. It's found in a bigger document called the Damar Tantra. It's 107 verses devoted specifically telling you how to drink your urine, how to use it. There's an Egyptian papyrus called the Water of Life papyrus. It's only 15 lines long, but it's just completely about how to use your urine. And... Um, the very first line of it says, uh, the water of life is given to you, drink it and wash your body with it. And that's pretty simple uh, daily. Kind of. my, my dad's got high blood pressure and he takes lots of tablets for it. I mean, I, if I could possibly convince him, I mean, actually you'll be convinced because I'm not doing this right. Hi dad. What, what could you say? Uh, I, I, that's one of the first things to go down is all three blood counts, blood pulse, uh, cholesterol and pressure. <coughs> Um, for my looking into it, because I have high blood pressure as well, uh, is it high blood pressure? pressure. Is, yeah. Sugar. Um, high blood pressure. It's a toxic load syndrome. Your high blood pressure is purely down to toxic load, making things move slowly. Like so. Oh, most because people, you're poisoned. Is it slowing things down? Yeah, deal exactly. With it. So uh -huh. there's, you have so much extra shit in there. Yeah. And just getting up to the three liters a day, or gallon, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's hard work, and I've, I've kind of watched people throughout a day working with someone, and besides the coffee and the teas and the soft, soft drinks, they're not actually drinking much water. You're right. So right. for the most part, I think most people are dehydrated, period, yeah. let alone whether the purity of the water. I had a friend, I'm sorry I can't do this in kilograms, but he was 175 pounds, kind of chunky, 
Uh, and in three months, he went from 175 to 135. And he's shorter than me. He should, that should be about his natural rate. It's probably 135. Mm -hmm. But all three of his blood measurements went from an unhealthy level to an athlete's level, even below normal. Within not touching a drop of urine, just a gallon a day of distilled water. So it'll absolutely help Dad feel better. Okay, Dad? Okay. That okay. just brings up a question about taking pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so that's what I was If you're taking pharmaceuticals, would you recommend not looping, but just drinking the distilled water and letting that flush out? out? That's remember Dave's mom, Dave Murphy's mom, she also has high blood pressure and she was on tablets and he did say something about that. Do you remember? Right. She, was she drinking her... She wasn't she drinking was, urine. Just she the, wasn't, but then she started. Okay. Drinking. She was drinking... Yeah. She was on... It's generally advised that if you're going to loop your urine, that you wean off of the drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but she was taking high blood pressure medicine. We got her on the still water, and uh, she said she wasn't feeling very good. And she said, I think I'm going to stop drinking this water. <clears throat> and he said, well, have you checked your blood pressure? And it was low. It was like below normal. And he said, she was taking two pills a day. He said, stop taking one of those pills. And she said, OK. And she did. And she kept going. And uh, I don't know if it was a couple more days or a couple weeks more. She called me and said, you know, I, st I still don't feel good. And she said, well, have you checked your blood pressure? And it was low again, right? Mm -hmm. And I uh, said, well, stop taking the other pill. And very soon after that, she was at perfect blood pressure. There's a doctor, um, there's a documentary you can get for free, or watch it on the internet or download. It's called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Uh -huh. that one? That's the doctor travels around all around the world and just brings people off all sorts of medication for AIDS, multiple sclerosis, I mean serious diseases. And he just says most people are seriously dehydrated and that's why they're you know, that's why they're ill. And then the med the pharmaceuticals it's called your body's many cries for water. But the, the pharmaceuticals then you're putting these artificial chemicals into your body that's already dehydrated and it can't it can't fight it so it becomes this kind of negative lip pattern. Um, but I was interested in that. I'm not sure if it's the same doctor, but he's been traveling around taking people off the medication, prescribing water for people to get hydrated. I don't know if it's distilled or not. Um, and that was that was radical. He had a lot of radical success with that. But there's another doctor that, that promotes urine therapy, and I can't think of his name. I don't know if you might know him. But he says that, um, so he, and he prescribes his own urine to his patients, and again, has had staggering re results. Mm -hmm. But his, his take is, um, men should only drink male urine and women should only drink female urine and that's to do with the hormones etc. I just wondered if you'd heard that or had any idea on that. Well Dave had an interesting testimony also that uh, I can't remember, some people had done male female cross drinking and gosh it was something about that not too long after that well, it was the Olympics. It was the Olympic athletes, wasn't it? Okay. And they drank virgin's urine. No, the what virgin in then? Russia <laughs> drank the uh, athlete's urine. Uh -huh. And then years later, when they had a baby... With a white man, it came out black. It came out mixed. That's her story. And the cell vibration is still there, apparently. But it, it didn't yeah. just happen to, you know, it happened to more than one. Yeah. It's definitely something you can do uh, for um, uh, sexual lack of uh, excitement is um, peeing on each other's uh, fountain, one fountain to another. Uh, and I know sometimes even when, when they have low libido, they prescribe testosterone. Well, your partner, if it's a man, mm. has testosterone mm. to give you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And you can drink the urine or pee on Go ahead. Do you know if there's been any research regarding malaria and urine? Um, it's all been done. And even if I don't have a specific case study for malaria, um, <coughs> where I'm working from is I'm working backwards. And the, the science of how it works becomes secondary. Once you learn to trust your intuition and, and uh, give yourself credit for being intelligent, uh, yeah. when you read a thousand case studies and for every disease you ever see, it vanquishes it, you know that if you haven't read a case study for a particular disease, it's just a matter of that not being recorded yet. Because the protocol is the same every time. Stop eating and start looping. Uh, 
Yeah, like somebody in my hair interview with Lisa Harris, and somebody asked me about autism. At the time, I hadn't heard of one, uh, but I know it will do it, even though I, I don't actually have a testimonial to rely on to say that, except at the end of the last conference we gave, some guy came up to me and told me that since they put their autistic child, the only other thing they did different was also give them probiotics, mm -hmm. but the kid had snapped up, 50% come out of his autistic uh, he was starting to respond to people and be aware of people. It would make total sense. It's just metal clogging up mm -hmm. the system, vacuum the garbage out, and it comes alive. Was that your or distilled? That was distilled water. I was going to ask you, how, did you get, how have you heard kids getting on or getting on with kids drinking urine? Well, it's a pretty touchy subject because you can get arrested for oh. whatever weirdness they want to point at you. Uh, but I, I do believe as we move into the new paradise paradigm of what we want here, um, I, it seems to me the original instructions of the body, when you're in the womb, you drink urine constantly. The baby starts drinking at five weeks old, and you are the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, the alchemist's favorite symbol. Um, breast milk is a distilled water. It's a living liquid. So you should go from your water to mom's water for however long you need to. And I think the original, you would go back to looping your own water. And that's why if you start doing this, you'll return to the state you live in the first nine months of your life, which is constant urine on the skin, <clears throat> if you do a daily rub down, and drinking it. The more that you treat yourself like you used to live in the womb, that's the key. That's what, I mean, the baby completely grows in the water, and the water forms your body. I've got psoriasis in my knees, and I have been rubbing it on. Yeah, um, I've known many people that have erased psoriasis. So you would just say maybe not rub it on, just leave it on, and then drink, just drink as well. Oh, when you rub it on, you generally leave it on. Yeah. You don't wipe it off afterwards. Oh, no, no. I, I mean, I just heard that if you rub it on, just rub it in. Yeah. Until it's dry. But you're saying now then if I just kept just carry on drinking urine and water, just water that. Yeah. Uh, even though that's a real part of the knowledge is to do some rubbing, especially in the parts that are affected. I've seen from experience that even if you never touch a drop of the outside, from the inside out, it'll push everything out and away from you. Um, a woman, 70 years old, actually the mother of the guy who went from 175 to 135, he got his mom on it. And at three days out, she had to go get a driver's license renewed to take the eye exam. And she had been required by law to wear driving glasses for 45 years. And the guy giving the test looked up at her funny. He's like, you've got 20-20 vision. And he unchecked the box on her license. And now she doesn't wear glasses anymore driving. Never put a single drop of urine in her eyes or distilled water in her eyes. Both which would have sped it up. But in three months, by doing the gallon a day from the inside out, it vacuumed. This is a liquid vacuum for the body. And I am telling you the location of the lost fountain of youth. It's not lost and it's not one of them. There's seven billion and counting. Everybody's got a pool and a fountain on their body. Uh, and I am telling you the secret to alchemy. Urine therapy is alchemy. Alchemy is urine therapy. You do not need to spend three decades up in a tower by candlelight studying old books because they will only mislead you and that's what they've been designed to do is to hide the secret of urine therapy that's where it's been for the past however many thousands of years. It's hidden in this thing called alchemy. When you realize that you see the L word or the L sound, E-L-A-L, -L, or L is used to produce the word light, look, um, living, uh, L is a sound that's used to refer to light in words either A-L or A-L, or it begins with L. And alchemy means, it starts with the A-L, it means light chemistry. Chemical means chemistry of light. All matter is condensed light. All the different minerals are just different bands of the light spectrum condensed down from the different colors. They make the different minerals. Water is a conductor of pure light.
start cycling that pure water through you, it's carrying massive amounts of light. This is light chemistry. And once you realize that urine therapy is alchemy, or if you're not sure, if you put that idea in your head and go now, now go read alchemical text, you keep urine in your head and you understand how urine therapy works, alchemy is describing urine therapy to a T. And all the magical powers associated with Saint Germain and finding the Philosopher's Stone, that's your third eye, is the Philosopher's Stone. The natural state of it, when it's not calcified and turned into a rock by fluoride, the natural state of your third eye is to have crystals all over it, calcite crystals, to pick up and receive and send messages. They're very, very sensitive. And inside the third eye is water. Did you say calcite oh, crystals? Calcite crystals. And when it gets fluoridated, that covers over that. It latches onto it. They put fluoride in the water because they know fluoride in the chemist world is known as the crazy compound because it love, it sticks to all kinds of things. It's very volatile and it loves to get locked into structural buildups. And so the bullshit reason they put it in the water is that it's good for the teeth. It has a half truth. Yes, it gets locked into and you have skeletal fluorosis and we got dental fluorosis. And when I was a kid, the only ads for tooth whitening products were for old people and their dentures to soak overnight. Now we got billboards everywhere with 20-year-olds in the ads. Why do 20-year-olds need tooth whitening products? Because there's so much fluoride everywhere. Fluorosis is anything other than bone white teeth. Now obviously, if you're just a smoker, you've never had fluoride, you a little yellow stain there, that's from smoking. But you see people with slightly yellow teeth everywhere. They got white streaks, brown spots, brown streaks, and they're cracking apart. That's dental fluorosis. And it gets locked into the structure. And yes, as the teeth are forming, you could say that it makes the teeth harder. And that's kind of the bullshit reason they put it in the water. Because yes, it's you, you've made the enamel stronger because you've jammed more shit into the sacred geometric design of it. But what happens over time is they become so dense, they become brittle, and they fall apart. And that's what skeletal fluorosis is and osteoporosis. It's because we're swamped with fluoride. So the only other place in your body, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, aside from teeth and bones, that you have hard substance is your pineal gland. So it goes in like a magnet when you drink it. It goes right and latches right into those crystals and clogs the whole thing up. Luckily, it's not supposed to be there. Luckily, it's got a positive charge. Luckily, it's inorganic. And there's two giant veins going right to your pineal gland. Luckily, it has a huge water flow. It's one of the first things to calcify, even if you don't live in a four-day society. If you do not know proper health and how to take care of your body, and you're cooking your food, you're eating garbage, it's one of the first things to calcify and make you only receptive to the five senses. Mm -hmm. And thus, we have a world full of people who can't feel spirit. It's not their fault. And the only pleasure they can get is from eating or how comfortable their chair is or how pretty their TV set is. They can't feel the higher senses because their radar dish to God has been jammed full of shit. <laughs> is fluoride dissolved by drinking dissolved? Absolutely. Dissolved. And that's why people have crown chakra bursts because the calcification breaks off and they can start to see again. I can see a light now. I haven't had a full on one, uh, which is uh, like the same thing as the Kundalini rising. The, the basic description of it is huge energy moving up the spine and then. The head feels expansive and there's a white light in their vision. Um, but lots of other people who have had different strengths of will willpower and have gone about the knowledge even better than I have, they've already had it and they're getting into uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, even more so than they're ready for because we're in a society where it's not something you're supposed to talk about. So when it starts to happen to you, there's very few people to talk to about it. Can I ask you? you may you may not want to answer this question, which is fine, but um, for those of us who have journeys with DMT, for example, mm -hmm. um, setting an intention to have the pineal gland de decalcify, decalcify for the length of that experience um, and to perceive light, just pure light, and that everything's made up of light. Have you had any, um, so I've had an experience of that, and, and then it's kind of another thing is simulating back into uh, in this whole story, but with, with people that you're mentioning that have done the 30 day, and Looping, mm -hmm. and yourself have been doing it for a long time. Um, have, has there been any? Has there been many testimonials about 
what happens when the pineal gland actually decalcifies in everyday life. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I understand the, the chakra burst, it's like a spiritual orgasm type right. thing, but I'm talking about every day, like, does it get to a point where you, where you actually, actually clean and, because it felt like an incredibly natural state, like the, right. the proper state, the beginnings of a proper state. They still say the it. proper state yeah. is to be, and normally when you when you're first starting to do this, people have to meditate, they get in a dark room to to see the white light because it's covered with calcification, it's, it's dim because it's covered with garbage. Um, people have to get in a dark room to become astral or to relax enough to let go of the body, but the real state is to have both these eyes open and that eye open, and you're, that supposedly what puts you into 5D is when you've got both, all three eyes working. Can you please talk about amalgam, mercury in, in the teeth, and, and any experience you have of <coughs> that? Uh, I don't have them. I've never had an experience with them. Uh, it will latch onto that gas. Um, uh, if you're looping, you're... That would be the best, aside from being able to afford to get them properly removed, that would be the best thing you could do, is to keep rinsing a magnetic vacuum over and over. If you switch your water to the pure waters, it's going to latch onto it and take it out of the body. And water does not screw up in its detox methods. It disables these things one unit at a time. And so it's not like it's going to loosen up a bunch of mercury to have this pools of it flooding through your body. It takes it away one guy at a time and brings it to the... And the body never does detox without handle, without a speed that it can handle. That's why there's only a certain top speed, because it will not dispose of garbage unless it can do it properly. So are you suggesting then that if, 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 um, if I was to continue to, to drink my urine uh -huh. on, uh, on, a, on a regular basis, that my, that my fillings would gradually dissolve and my teeth would grow back where, the, where that, those fillings were? <laughs> I don't know if those individual teeth will grow back, but yes, over time, those will dissolve. Um, although I've noticed there's a real, you know, somebody once asked me about, well, if I got a heart pump in, you know, or some mechanical thing, if I drink distilled water, is it going to melt the object, you know, and I'm relying on to live? And there seems to be a real difference between cast <coughs> objects and thing, all these deposits that are naturally in you got there one bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And so the water takes them away one bit at a time. With a mouth and fillings, what about if you were to do a mouthwash? So, so you actually did a mouthwash and spat it out so, so it didn't have to go back? Yeah, you could, especially if you're trying to specifically concentrate on that. Yeah, I don't see why it would hurt. Um, I brush my teeth with pee every day. And it's full of? Well, now I spit that one out, but the rest of it I, I swallowed. But if you actually brush it, it makes them really shiny and shiny, and they're getting whiter as well. <laughs> toothpaste as well, or just no, just with pee. Oh, right. I haven't used toothpaste in five <clears throat> years. Um, my teeth have gotten whiter. My wife is a painter, and she knows color. She'll testify that they are whiter now than they used to be. Um, that again is also nice. that also is proof to use <clears throat> against the people that try to tell you to leach minerals from the body. Because if it were, the teeth wouldn't just get whiter; they'd start dissolving. So is this just a water we were giving? Either one, any of the distilled waters. Uh, they all, <clears throat> the four distilled waters, there's one artificial and the three natural. Artificials, however method you have to make it on your own, the natural are all living juices, all precipitation, rain, mist, snow, dew, and fog, and all body fluids. They're all magnetically attracted to death. And so when you make your teeth whiter, it's because it's vacuuming off all the deposits that made them yellow. Yeah, um, I'm really pleased I came, by the way. Um, I, I nearly didn't, and it's been blowing my mind. And, and I was one of the guys that had never really thought about this. I came because I saw distilled water. Mm -hmm. I heard a bit about it. I never even gave a thought to the aura thing, so thank mm -hmm. you for opening my eyes to that. Everything else you've talked about, completely on board with. I want to link in something I do with what you're doing. One or two people might recognise the fact that I've been here before and I've given out leaflets about smart meters. And I'm really on a campaign to raise awareness about the dangers of electromagnetic radiation. Mm. Last night, I published on a second site I'm setting up um, about something north of 2,000 studies showing harmful effects associated with electromagnetic radiation, so yeah. wireless cell phones, that kind of thing. Yeah. I did a quick search on it just now, on my offline version, by the way, not using mm. Wi-Fi. 
and I've got about 10 studies that show interference with electromagnetic radiation in urinary function. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've come across? No. Um, and and is not... that potentially part of the, the war that we're in? Um, I wouldn't put anything past them, uh, but I've never seen one urine therapy fast fail. Um, <clears throat> let's use that. When I say all your dreams can come true and will come true from this, a lot of times as you're playing as a kid, you wish you had a force field, right? You know, you can't shoot me, I got a force field on, right? This is actually possible because we're dealing with light. You can create a light field. Uh, and this is why this is alchemy. This is light chemistry. <clears throat> Distilled water will not conduct electricity. All electricians know that. It is the dirt in water that the electricity arcs across. Yes, you can have a container to still water, and if you turn up the amperage enough, you can force it to arc across the whole thing. But it won't be the water it's passing through, or that's allowing it to happen. How do batteries work then? Huh? How do batteries work then? Because they're used to still lead. Um, yeah, they have lead, and when you put the water in, it's so filled with acid. But it's acid. Yeah, it's acid. Oh, okay. um, there's a thing called an ohms meter. It's a simple $20 electrician's tool. It's a little yellow box with a digital readout on it, or sometimes a needle, and it's got a black and a red electrode on it. And they use it to test whether things are hot or not before they start working on so you don't get electrocuted. You can take well water, filtered water, and distilled water, and as you set it in the two different, put the diodes, and what it's measuring when you stick it in the water, it's measuring up here the amount of resistance. It's measuring how easy it is, because it's got a battery in it, for the electricity to pass from one electrode to the other. And the harder it is, the more units of ohms there are. Ohms measure resistance. So when you put it in dirty well water, the meter's low, because there's lots of objects in there, there's very little resistance. When you put it in the filtered water, the water's not as dirty, it goes up some. There's more resistance because you have cleaner water, less particles for the electricity to flow across. When you put it in distilled water, it goes up high because there's even less particles in there. When I grabbed them, it jumped even higher than the distilled water. When my friend, the electrician, who pulled it out and he drinks filtered water at his house, when he grabbed them, it went back down to the filtered water range of resistance. So, <clears throat> distilled water, pure water, which is really what we're talking about. You've got to realize that pure water and distilled water are the same exact thing. And athosaurus, purified and distilled are synonyms. You buy a gallon of distilled water, it says in the small print, purified by steam distillation. Distilled water Pure water does not conduct electricity that is harmful to us, mm. but it conducts, like a genius, energy that is empowering to us. The more you clean out your body, you raise your resistance. You raise the level of ohms. So when you go to church, you say your ohms. The Buddha's favorite chant is ohm. The sound of the sun, out of the report of the sounds of the planets, the sun is just constantly saying, oh. <clears throat> so it's funny that ohms measure resistance, because the more you ramp yourself up and turn up your ohms, you are becoming the resistance to dark forces. You can literally create an electromagnetic force field around yourself, the more clean that you make this water-based meat suit that you're hanging out in. So how can we make it in time with smart meters, scale our weaponry, cell phones, Wi-Fi, cell towers, heart? Chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. um, when people start healing, and we use curly in photography, when you cook food, when you have beautiful living food, it's got a bright purpley blue grow, it, it, it photographs electromagnetic fields. The same food cooked will look like a black and white photograph because there's no electromagnetic field anymore for the camera to pick up. When people die, 
versus when they're alive. They have a bright aura. When they die, it starts to dissipate the electromagnetic energy. When people go into healing mode, they take before or after pictures of their body parts. There's a low glow around them. When they start to become clean and start to feel healthy, the glow gets bigger than the Electrocurlian photograph. So at the same time that your resistance to bad energy goes up, your conductivity to prana goes up. It's a win-win situation. And you'll feel it too. People, uh, one of the first testimonials is always within three days somewhere. They start to feel more energy than ever. Within a month, they'll know that I'm right because the energy will have continued the whole time and their skin will always have a moist sheen to it. They call it dewy. And within 90 days is when things of an undeniable nature happen. And um, I was going to tell you earlier that I screwed up. Wait until you have, or it makes it much easier. <laughs> if you've changed yourself, people will be dying to know what you've been doing. They'll be begging you to tell them. You know, whatever part of yourself changes, un the 90 days out is when the undeniable things happen. Other people want to start asking you what you've been doing. Whereas if you start trying to tell them from the beginning, they just think, great. Because they're the classified state, really, spiritually as well as. The, the guy Dave did the 30 day summit yeah. did he measure how much he was consuming? No, but I did, uh, I've done a, a two five day fast, and I've done a seven day fast. And I measured it one 24 hour period and I peed exactly six liters. And drank it all? Yeah. Six liters a day, over uh -huh. the course of the day? Yeah, uh, in a whole 24 hour period. So even though you may only have a liter inside you, because you, it's coming, you pass it through continually, right. you, know, you can get that side of it. Quite yeah. often it and becomes more the next one. That's also why within three to five days, even though your urine may be nasty right now, within three to five days, you get to rainwater clear urine. And it's that so far I'll just show away. you, that's my pee. Right, and this isn't a very good one because I had a long journey down here. This is the last pee I did, which was about five minutes ago. I don't know if you You're can see. My shirt. That's the color of my pee. No way. Yeah. No, no, that is dark. Yeah. That is oh. rubbish. It can get because normally my wee, Right. It's it'll, that color, it'll be and it's clearer. fizzy, and it tastes amazing. It's hard to conceptualize. And if you, I don't know if you've done a pass it. Shall we share it? I love having a drink it. I love it. This is why we started doing it. We had a couple of like this in the kitchen, you, you know, <laughs> that I've never heard before. That does not smell of wee. And when it looks it like that, and it smells like that, it tastes like that. And the other thing is, why do you think public urinals exist? It's to so alienate you from the very being that you are. I mean, just look at them, full of chemicals, the smell, you walk in and you think so, ugh. And so you feel yuck about yourself. So you, this is the whole... Ugh. Who dares to take a sip? I can bust. Go on, that's the guy. Thank you. Now you're the second man on the planet who shared my weight. Thank you very much. Now you, have, you, you have all of her <laughs> They say a traveling <laughs> trick is if you. I was going to say how do you yeah. do that? you can find the healthiest looking bellhop in your hotel and ask him for a glass of pee. If you can get around explaining it to him, uh, he <laughs> will give you all of his immunity to the local diseases. Wow! Yeah, wow. wow. Yeah. Or you can just wait for your own system to learn. But that's a way to get a leg up. So now we're all immune to what look, he's doing. Look at this. So if you oh, have wow. India or something, come back empty at this rate. Well, you normally get a funny tummy. I'm going to fill it up exactly. again in a minute. Exactly. So, oh, that's a poison. Any, any and now poison, that's not great. Any food it's poisoning? not as good as it normally is. It was much better than that. Yeah. I'm quite disappointed. <laughs> I've been trying not to drink too much because I, I am, because wow. why oh, I'm sorry. peeing so much, why I keep disappearing is I've been looping now for four days, plus drinking, and in the last four days, I had two meals two, four days ago, and I had a banana yesterday, and I've had an apple today, and that's it. And I've never had so much energy. I've never yeah. felt so amazing. I'm so happy. I have not bathed 
in fluoride. I've not stepped foot in my I haven't even had my water on since the beginning of the summer. I have not bathed in water. I wash in distilled water my four Fs, the bits that need to be cleaned. Yeah, no? And I do a huge jug of pee, hair right the way over. Girls, if you want to type, I'm 50, uh -huh. and I tell you what, it tightens up anything that's elastical yeah. that you want to have risen. Right. It's absolutely amazing. You can feel my skin. If you want, you can all come smell me, because I do smell divine, and I, and I don't mean that either way, I really do. People come and smell me, and they go, oh my God. They expect it to smell like pee, but it's not sweet. You know, I, you do, and when you smell like it, you start to be like a baby. And you know what the top of a ba baby's head smells yeah, like. You yeah, just want yeah. to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it was trying my pee. I'm really <laughs> <laughs> well, did you know? I did not know why I did it. What's that? Oh, do you want to? Do you oh, you want do. It? Oh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's nicer when it's a bit warmer. Yes, he asked if you're traveling, for like you go to India, where you know, you're going to get dysentery or whatever. That's a good place to do this trick. Of get, it's called auto vaccination. You have every, that's what the vaccines are trying to make. Yeah. Um, and any food poisoning that happens to come on. Immediately, that knowledge, if you keep waiting, if you're thrown up and barfing and diarrhea, you don't have to go through that. As soon as you figure out that there's something wrong, get your pee under your tongue at the very least. Can I ask about bathing in, in sort of tap water then? The body doesn't, the body still abs absorbs that? It's, it does not have its own sort of way of... I know when I bathe in fluorinated waters, my skin feels dry. And as soon as we learn about fluoride chlorine, we shut the sap water up, we dug a well. Not one more dry skin episode after that. So, you know, obviously some of the stuff does penetrate. Um, so what, you're getting your water now from a well? Yeah. We have a, that's a great scenario. We have well water to send to the distiller. Way less VOCs to worry about. Okay. So it does matter the original source of the water you This makes it better. I mean, you know, a lot of people are using this London tap water, which is like 300 parts per million. Kevin? Mexican beer. Mexican beer. Mm -hmm. They don't use fluoride in Mexico. You know, all the, wherever they're using fluoride, I don't think you want those beers from those countries. So. Mm -hmm. I tend to go with the we talked about storage. Yeah. 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 Secrets, glass yeah. jars there in a plastic jar. Um, if you you're into like storing distilled water or storing your pee, how long can you store each for? What's the best vessel to do it in? Uh, distilled water generally has no expiration date as long as the bottle was nice and clean to begin with. A lot right. of times, distilled water is used to sterilize things. Right. Uh, dentists always have distilled water distillers. Um, urine. Getting into aged urine, there's a whole <laughs> room of science, there's a whole world for you to learn about in there. Different vintages. <laughs> Different vintages. Yeah. Um, you're only supposed to drink urine oh, when it's yeah, fresh. <laughs> um, generally within 15 minutes, it starts to oxidize. Um, and you know if you, if you have your blood come out, it's bright red at first, very quickly it starts to get dark red. This is oxygen breaking things down. And oxygen decomposes everything, it seems to also give us life. But when you're checking out of life, it seems to be the dude that breaks things down. Uh, so they generally say to drink it fresh and immediately. Uh, but there's a whole world of aged <coughs> urine for external skin rubs. You're not supposed to drink it when it's old. The only time I've ever seen a book talk about drinking it aged was when it said you had worms and parasites. Aging it for 18 to 24 hours will get that ammonia level up a little bit, and you can still drink it. And it'll be extra strong at killing those creatures. Uh, when oxygen hits urine, it ferments the urea into ammonia. And if you ever found old urine, or a toilet wasn't flushed in a few days, or you go in public urine, it's because of the ammonia, the oxygen is fermenting and making ammonia. And I have two-year-old urine at my house. You can age it as long as you want. It just gets stronger and stronger. You will not believe how much ammonia is in it when you get it, even just a 30 days old. Uh, it's hard to even, it's hard to use it in an enclosed bathroom. We have a bathtub outside, and it's not even so much the smell. I mean, the smell is horrific, but the ammonia fumes alone will make you feel like, oh my God, if I don't get out of here, I'm not, I'm gonna pass out. Um, we have an old cloth of bathtub outside with some walls around it, and we do urine baths out in the sun. We'll go take a, a liter of urine, aged urine, and lay right in the sun, no sunscreen, and just keep basing ourselves. 
and let it dry. Baste yourself and let it dry. You will turn brown so fast. And I'm very white. Uh, and uh, when I first started learning about this, I went out, and I live in the south in America. I started laying out in the sun at the peak of daylight with no sunscreen, and I went from white to brown with zero burning and zero peeling. And even if I did let my skin get red, every time that that uh, stinging feeling came on, I immediately put on a coat of fresh urine, and it would, the ammonia knocks out the sting. And the okay, biggest thing about burns... Huh? Not, fr not fresh urine, you're talking about... Um, I didn't because I was going to be... The, the old urine is so smelly, you kind of have to be in the right situation. So you, know, you don't want to be going to bed next with this coating on you. You know, because you know, when you do get a sunburn, like every two hours it'll start stinging. So you got to get up in the middle of the night. And I was just using fresh pee because it doesn't smell at all when you rub it in. But it knocks out the sting immediately and it moisturizes. And that's really what causes the pain of burns is dry skin. And all these burn wounds are just criminals. I mean, none of the doctors are criminals. They don't know what they're doing. It's, it's the Rockefellers, the Carnegie's, and the Mellons that are controlling the purse strings of the universities. They're not letting this knowledge in. But uh, if people have burns, they can just be covered in urine. And urine creates burns that leave no scars at all. Um, can I ask a question about, oh, sorry. Let me talk about yeah. aged urine a little more, I'm sorry. Um, you can make gunpowder with aged urine. Nitrogen is a huge aspect of ammonia. And um, if you let urine age, you age it, let the ammonia kind of go up, and you dry it, let it evaporate, you'll be left with a powder that's nitrogen. All you need is charcoal and sulfur, and you have gunpowder. Why would you want to do that? So that you know about it, uh, if you need it. Uh, if you've got reptiles coming after you, I don't know what, but it's something that you should know about. It's an ancient piece of knowledge. and. Bomb makers don't like to order lots of fertilizer because they're after the nitrogen. That's the hard thing to get. And it was a known fact in, in earlier medieval times of war when they first started using gunpowder. Uh, in ancient Rome, there was a tax on urine. If we were all hanging out in the street corner and had to go pee, there were stone bunkers on the corners and you would go pee in them. The man whose job it was to come around and clean out those things and collect the urine he had to pay a tax on the urine because it's so useful in industry. Um, you can dye wool with it. You can tan leather with it. You can make soap with it. Uh, you can make gunpowder with it. Uh, it literally produces a sudsing soap. When you age it long enough and the ammonia content goes up high enough, and you come into contact, if you mix it with human fat, remember in a Fight Club they wanted to go steal fat to make soap? I don't remember that or not, but they went to the liposuction clinic and stole fat out of the dumpsters. When your hair gets greasy, if it's greasy enough and you have old enough urine, you take a clear liquid of this brown aged urine and you put it up there and start going like this, and you know that feeling when you have a pool of shampoo and all of a sudden your hands are full of foam? That is exactly what happens with urine. It literally becomes a soap if you want to use it that way. Generally, at least 30 days to get to that strength. But I mean, even if it's not that old, it will clean your hair anyways. It's just not as strong. But you can. So you just put it in a container and you close it tight. Uh, there's a whole method to it of, of only putting the cap on lightly because you want oxygen to get to it so it can ferment. If you pee into there and put it on tight, 30 days later, there'll be a, there'll be a kind of a sucking sound when you take it off. So generally, either a tuft of cotton or loosely placed cork. You don't, you want partially covered so whatever in the air can't just keep falling into it. For the first 15 minutes, it's the most sterile substance on the planet. And any bacteria, any virus, any pathogen, any fungus, anything will get killed by it. But after that 15 minutes, once the oxygen starts to oxidate it, sterility goes away. And it, anything that falls in it, it starts becoming a petri dish, a place for it to live. So that's why you keep it slightly covered. Uh, and I found after about 30 days, I don't need the cap to be tight anymore. I can tighten it down, <coughs> and even a year later, it won't make any sucking sound. So it seems to do the majority of its oxidizing in the first 30 days. And the man that takes it away was called the piss taker. That's where it comes from. Taking the piss? 
So, should you age it only in glass, not plastic? Huh? Should you age it only in glass? And that would make, yeah, I do. Plastic. I do. I made bottles like that, and it makes a lot of sense. Cause, yeah. Is that the same, you know, the baldness thing? You use age. <clears throat> It'll make it happen faster. Yeah. Um, but Dave wasn't even really using that much HP. Dave, Dave was one of the people who hit a bald spot that started growing in brand new hair. Um, he just used fresh every morning, rubbed it into his head, and then the rest of his body. There are entire hospitals. And he's black. And what's very interesting, he says, you know, you get very, very, you get very, very chalky. Mm. And since he's been using urine, he doesn't get that at all. Mm. Amazing. His skin is completely different. And he said that, you know, it's really amazing because he's had that problem all his life. It gets very dry, very ashy looking. Right. You don't have to use aged urine at all. <clears throat> but it is a whole other world. Once you, if you ever get a urine therapy book, they start telling you about it. And, the highest urine therapy I could recommend is The Water of Life by John Armstrong. And he's kind of the one that's responsible for bringing it back up into our modern mm -hmm. attention. Uh, before him, all there was was Dr. Duncan's book in 1918 called Autotherapy. And he learned, he had one small section on urine, but his was all about bodily secretions and that they contain the information to heal. Kind of like I'm talking about using the auto vaccination. He even knew and found that you could take the pus from an infected wound and put it under your tongue, and the wound would just disappear. No. That's called autotherapy. So, of course, he included <laughs> urine in that. Before that book, you got to go to the 1600s to find a Salmon's English physician. Uh, uh, Hippocrates, in his court, the corpus, he mentioned urine over 100 times. Uh, but John Armstrong, it's the first urine therapy book I read. <laughs> and if you keep reading 20 more urine therapy books, all you're going to do is repeat what you learned in the first one. That's what allows me to have confidence is because it just kept repeating and repeating and repeating. I know that it works, and figuring out how to speak correctly about the science of it is secondary to me. That's of secondary importance. And knowing how organic and inorganic work and all this stuff, it's of secondary importance. Um, do you think it could be used as fuel? Yes, somebody just recently developed a piss uh, a, a generator that works on urine. It was just at an African World's yeah. Fair not about a month ago, right? Yeah. And of course, there's water-powered cars, and the water power, it doesn't matter what kind of water you put in those, it doesn't have to be clean water. So you can piss in your gas tank with one of those. What about for women? During the period, yeah. um, it's. I've always heard them say it's not a problem. The books say it's not a problem because that's a common question. Mm. I think it's more of a psychological. Although I, it does seem to be a common theme that if people get a lot of blood in their stomach, that they vomit. For some reason the, the stomach rejects blood, so it must have something with the blood cells mm. because urine doesn't make you do that unless it's a gag reflex. Um, so there may be, if you happen to have a lot of flow get into urine, it may be possible that it, it might make you feel a little nauseous because of the blood cells in it. But I think generally there's not too much in it, right? It's a little, a little tint to it sometimes. And what I found if you let first spit out, uh -huh. then after that it's quite clear. I mean, they come out from different areas, separate channels, so you just have to be... In olden days, when they used to drip tape there, menstrual blood, that was a way of awakening themselves and receiving all sorts of things, that's what the moon launch was all about. So I would say, well, I mean, I sent you to do it, didn't I? I did it. I said, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask a question about, we had um, another speaker here on Friday, I think it was, and speaking on holographic kinetics, which is another kind of words, mm -hmm. I mean, you all point to the same kind of truth, you think different words, I guess, but... Um, so we, we touched on a little bit, those of us were here, the kind of oppressive energy, the dark forces as opposed to the light that we can many of us sense. I just wondered what, I, I'm always baffled, I asked this question then, I'm always baffled what the, why <laughs> dark forces behave the way they do. I just wondered if you had any idea about it, because my, and I guess it's just a personal thing, but I just always think once a being or an, or an energy or an entity has experienced love, we call love, light vibration, love, the bliss, the kind of spiritual, why Why would they ever choose the kind of sadomasochistic, trying to juice other people or cause, have, have, 
have with core hair loss. I was just wondering if you have a sense in everything you're doing or awakening to. Why? My biggest way to sum up is what I think they feel is insecurity. Uh, maybe, maybe they very well have never felt love. And so there are creatures that haven't lived enough lifetimes to experience that. And when you are low vibrating and stuck to only the five senses, you feel insecure. You feel like you're a god stripped of your powers. It kind of makes it feel weird to be a, a human having a spiritual experience with no spiritual powers. It kind of sucks for everybody. And you're like, what the hell am I doing here? This, this is boring. I've been meditating for years, and I can't ever seem to get anywhere. Well, these people wouldn't even do that, probably. They're just out, stuck around right. and using people. I just, so I just they seem to... like insecure people to me. In our general day-to-day -day life, the people who are the meanest to us, who are physically violent, they tend to be what you could summarize about them is that they're insecure in their own power. I don't see any other reason why you would need to fluoridate and chemtrail other people unless you were insecure. Could they be just playing out the negative side of this reality? So There's that whole so thing we too. That, we get that comparison <coughs> so we can actually get that the hardest test you know, to see if we can evolve. But then that doesn't really make I mean, sense. That's why we'd want to win a war like that. Wouldn't we just say, oh, let's carry on? I mean, I don't know. There seems to be a common. I don't know either. I mean, to really okay. answer your question, I, it baffles me too. I just can't get the motivation, but right. I just can't right. get the, you know, I understand being in darkness until there's shown a chink of light, but surely a chink of light's coming at some point where, whereby, I don't know. Well, just, how, how many of us have this information right now and would actually start doing it immediately? Oh, yeah, I've been doing it anyway. But, but what I'm saying is that that's things. the resistance. I mean, how many hands went up? So that resistance is, we, 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 so we, we, we don't, we, Let's say that the evil is not out there, or the, the whatever, the good and bad, or whatever, isn't out there. Let's say it's we're, we're, it's all we're within here. So how much do I resist? Like I know that if I don't smoke, it, I feel amazing, but I still smoke. So so I have had the experience. That part of me had the experience of being um, touched by that love, but still I don't do it. Okay, so, on the subject so of love thing, and spirit, yeah. I'm going to go produce water, and Oliana <laughs> is going to give a talk about uh, the water, the spiritual aspect tied to your waters. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll be, I'll be back at